spiritual word. God had the word with him. And the word became fresh. Why should my face not be sad when sons and daughters are dying without Jesus? Matthew 13, 25. Matthew 13, 25. I want us, all of us together, we pray. Matthew 13, verses 25, go through to 30. All of us together, want to go. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tears also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tears? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do ye? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tears, you also uproot the wheat with them. That he, Let both glow together unto the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the lepers, First gather together the tears and buy them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. I have a message from the Lord. A call to prayer. When we think about prayer, Prayer is the life we live in the realm of the spirit. Prayer is the life that we live in the realm of the spirit. Jesus said in the book of Luke, Chapter 18 and verses 1. Men ought to pray always. And not lose heart. Men. Then he spoke a parable to them. That men always ought to pray. And not lose heart heart. Jesus knew that prayer is the life of a believer in the life in the spiritual realm. There is no one that can enter into the spiritual realm without prayer. There is none who can engage with the affairs of the spiritual matters without prayer. Jesus himself said, men ought to pray always. Always is always. Men ought to pray always. Meaning, men should not pray sometimes. Men should be in prayer at all times. When you get into prayer, you connect yourself into the world of the spirit man. I say again, when you connect yourself into prayer, 
you connect yourself into the life of the spiritual. God never hears carnal men. God hears spiritual men. And you can never be spiritual without prayer. Prayer makes you spiritual. If you pray it from the depth of your heart, prayer will make you. And what prayer will make you? It will make you spiritual. From the scripture we just read, the Bible says, while men slept, while men did what? Slept. When they did not carry prayer as they should not, it should be carried. Jesus said, man ought to pray always. But when man decided not to pray, and they slept, man decided to, not to pray and slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went his way. When men decided not to pray and they went to sleep, the enemy came, sowed tears, and went his way. They were asleep. They did not hear the enemy. They were snoring. They did not see or hear the entry of the enemy. When they slept, the enemy came in. He did not knock the door. He came in. And after having coming in, he sold tears among the wheat and went his way. Any time a man will sleep in prayer, the enemy has a way of entering into the life of that man. When men forsake prayer and they consider sleep to be their way of life, then let those men be prepared for battle with Satan. When men decides they will not pray, they will sleep. When God calls them to pray, they say, we will not pray. They sleep. Let those men be prepared for the entry of the enemy. But a man who pray, he guards his territory. Prayer is a defense to those who pray. I say again, prayer is a defense to those who pray. When a man pray, he guards his territory. What did you write? Prayer is a defense to those who pray. To those who do not pray, they are defenseless. To those who never decide to make prayer a priority in their lives, they are vulnerable to the attacks of the devil. A man who never pray. And want God to answer is a dreaming man. A man who pray, God will answer that man. 
call unto me and I will hear you and I will answer you. It is calling upon God and God answering you. A man who does not call can never hear a response. But a man who calls will gladly hear the response to the one he's calling. And so church of Jesus, the Lord has spoken into my spirit for the two weeks that go tell the church, I am calling them back to prayer. I am calling them back to prayer. This is a message from your father. And your father has told me to tell you, he is calling you back to prayer. You have been desiring that God will do things. But God says, tell them, I need them in prayer. If I can find them in prayer and I hear them in prayer, I will answer them. I will not answer the desire of their hearts that are not being prayed for. I will answer the desire of their hearts in the platform of prayer. When men slept, when they loved sleep, more than prayer, when they loved fellowship with people, more than fellowship with their father, when they loved the natural, the outside world, more than their father, the devil, the enemy came in and planted tears. How many are asleep today? You have decided to live a life of slumber and you have forsaken prayer. But you want God to hear you when you go to him for one minute. Why spend with people two hours and you spend with God ten minutes? Who is more important to your life? Is it God or the people that you spend with 20 hours, 2 hours, 3 hours. But when it comes to God, you only have a little time with your God. My father has spoken to my spirit that I come and tell you, he's calling you back to prayer. He's calling you back to prayer. Whatever you desire, it can be done in the platform of prayer. The ministry that you want to do, it can only be done in the platform of prayer. You desire other men, you desire how blessed they are. They were blessed in the platform of prayer. If you can be in the platform of prayer, God will come and answer you. While men slept, the enemy came and sold tears. Tears could be sicknesses. When men slept, they were not fiery to conquer sicknesses. They were not fiery to conquer the spirit of death. When man slept, he came and planted tears in them. But my father says, if you want to be a spiritual man, be a man of prayer. Tell your neighbor, be a man of prayer. It is not what you hear 
from people, it is what you hear from God that makes you. The one you stay with for a long time, you become like that person. The one you commune with for a long time, you become like that person. If you commune with God for hours and hours, you have a revelation of God. If you commune with men of an, of undeserved character, you become like those men of undeserved character. If you can have God with you in your house, you will be like the God you are calling every day. You cannot be what you have not invested. I say you cannot be what you have not invested. Say, I cannot be what I have not invested. Amen. You cannot be what you have not invested. If you invest prayer in your life, you will become a product of your prayer. If you invest worship in your life, you will be a product of that worship. Prayer and worship goes together. You can never be a prayer warrior and you are not a worship warrior. You can only become your investment. How long have you prayed to become what you desire to become? God says, go and tell them. Let them invest into the life of prayer. And that will make them what they desire to become in Jesus' mighty name. Whatever you have been praying for, the Lord says, invest in prayer. And that will make you what you have desired to become in Jesus' mighty name. If you spend time with men that are bitter, you become a bitter man. If you spend time with men that are unforgiving, you become an unforgiving man. If you spend time with men of prayer, you become a man of prayer. Saul was not a prophet. But because he lived and he desired to see the prophets. The Bible says that one day Saul prophesied. And when the people heard Paul Saul prophesy, they asked, is Saul also a prophet? Saul was not a prophet. But by the power of association, he became a man that can prophesy. The people you associate with will affect your life positively or negatively. Can I hear an amen? God is calling you back to prayer. He's saying you have been praying, but you have stopped praying. He's calling you back to prayer. When he planted tears, the Bible says the enemy came and planted tears. The enemy came and planted tears. And verses 26. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tears also appeared. When the wheat appeared, tears also appeared. And 27, 
The Bible says, So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tears? Did you not sow good seed in your field? Were you not once a prayerful man? Were you not once a worshiper of God at all times? Were you not at once a good man and a good woman in the house of God? But when you slept, the enemy sold tears. And the servant is asking, how, did, how does it happen, sir? Did you not sow good seed in your field? When you prayed, were you not, were you not sowing good seed? Were you not sowing good seed to your children? When you prayed for your children every day, were you not sowing good seed for your children? My son, you will prosper. My daughters, you will increase. Were you not sowing good seed that time when you did so? And how is it? The servant is asking, sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tears? Didn't you pray for your children? How then is it they have behaved this way? How then is it things are turning against you? How then is it that things are turning aloud against your life? But Jesus says, when men slept. Was the church not going strong and strong every day? What happened when men slept? The enemy sold tears. He says in 28, he said to them, Let's read together one to go. He said what? An enemy has done? What question is he answering? He's answering 27. Can you go to 27? That's what he's answering. Lead together with me 27. One to go. Uh -huh. He answered the question. 28. He said to them, an enemy has done. So whatever you see happening around you, it is not God who is not concerned about you. The enemy has done it. The enemy has done it. If you see your children in alcohol, the enemy has done it. When you see them in drugs, the enemy has done it. It is not God. The enemy did it. If you see confusion in the church, the enemy has done it. It will never prevail in Jesus' name. And the servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? He was asking for permission to go and uproot the tears. And the master said, Since you already slept, 
Since you are already asleep, let whatever is in the system grow with it. Since you already slept, whatever the enemy has sowed, let it grow. Because if you dare remove one, you will remove the good one. But he said, no. Lest while you gather up the tears, you also uproot the wheat with them. Even in the church. When men slept, even the tears were planted. But God says, you cannot uproot the tears in the church and leave the wheat to grow. Let them grow together. So the question is, now that we are growing together, are you wheat or tear? Ask your neighbor, are you wheat or tear? The master Jesus said, let it grow together. Could we be forcing the tear to pray? Could we be forcing the tear in the church? Pray, pray, and the tear is not meant for prayer. He said, let the tear and the wheat grow together. Look at that neighbor again. Look at that neighbor. Look at that neighbor. Don't greet the neighbor. You, you may be greeting a tear. Don't greet the neighbor. Look at that neighbor. Tell your neighbor, my neighbor, I am asking you again. Are you a tear or a wheat? Look at that neighbor and tell your neighbor, prayer is inevitable. Amen. Our prayers will be answered because we are praying without ceasing. It must be prayer at all times. 